Yo, what up everybody? Marcus here on the Limited Tundra's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be doing a video that was requested by somebody, and I thought it was a fantastic um, request. Had it fresh on my mind right now that I was scrolling through the notes on my phone. Figured, you know what, why not do it right now that it's still fresh on my mind. Truck is clean, looks, looks good. And to top it off, it's been exactly one year since I changed my wheel and tire setup. So, I figured now better than ever i can really give you guys my honest opinion on this wheel and tire setup and um my feelings as to how i would compare it to my previous wheel and tire setup um for those of you that are new to the channel or perhaps this is the first video that you've ever seen um i used to have my truck on 20 by 12s and 33s they were 20 by 12 um negative 44 millimeter offset hostile sprockets and a black and milled finish to this day, even though it's an older wheel, to this day, it's still one of my favorite wheels out there for a cast um, aluminum wheel. Really, really clean design. And in all honesty, looks great on this body style truck. So, um, you know, do I kind of regret having the 20 by 12? No, not really. Learning experience. Um, my honest opinion, I think they look fantastic on double cabs on axis cabs 20 start to look a little bit big but they still look super duper slick um do i regret switching to 17s no actually quite the contrary if we can be 100 percent honest um things that i miss from the 20s looks and stance so with these 17s um i'm currently running a 17 by 9 i'll flip the camera around and show you guys in a bit i'm currently running a 17 by 9 negative 38 millimeter offset wheel it's a um, 17 by 9 scs ray 10 in a matte dark bronze with a black lip um like black beadlock little ring around so these are my current wheels and tires like i said i've had these now for um a year and i had my hostiles on for like three years so with these trucks the thing that i've noticed is um 20s they definitely throw their weight around and um that was just my biggest issue that's why i would never road trip with those wheels when i had them even if i had a full-size spare i would have never road tripped to mexico with those 20 by 12s um at one point i had a set of all terrains uh bfg ko2s which i loved and then i had a set of nitro ridge grapplers which i hated um we'll kind of get into details about that in a bit too um but i would never road trip with those wheels long distance because of the leverage that they had on the steering system for this ifs truck and um like i said they were just really freaking heavy uh these wheels and tires would i road trip with them absolutely i need to get a full-size spare because i think this time when i go to mexico in december i will be taking it with these wheels i had a buddy ask me why i didn't take them uh this time around and that was my biggest reason was the fact that i don't have a full-size spare as many of you know um for the true toyota enthusiast scs or stealth custom series constantly sells out like that like the minute they restock they sell out so i haven't been able to get myself a full-size spare um, but if I did have one, I would definitely road trip with these wheels. Um, I also, my house, the house in Mexico, um, when you're entering the truck, basically like full on flexes in the driveway due to how the driveway is. So I was kind of worried about rubbing with these, but I actually rubbed with my stocks for the first time. I'm assuming just an alignment type deal, but I figured, you know what, if I'm going to rub, I might as well at least rock the 33s. Um, also, these aren't anywhere near as heavy. They're obviously heavier than stocks, but they're nowhere near as heavy as the um, 20 by 12s. And with them not being as wide or as heavy, they don't have as much leverage um, on the steering system. So I've taken a couple of road trips with this truck, like three, four hour road trips uh, with these 33s. And it feels great at 80, 85 miles an hour. So also, obviously, with the bigger sidewall, you get a little bit more cushion. Um, probably also helps that i have a full fully rebuilt front suspension fresh shocks in the rear um to help with the feeling um the ride uh comfort driving down the road on the interstate with these but in all honesty like i actually really really like this wheel and tire setup on this truck right now size um i wish it had like an inch more of stance that is the one thing that i missed from the 20 by 12s but when you go from like stocks to this, I mean, it just looks so much more nasty. So, um, I have a buddy 
his name is Chris. Um, I'll actually leave his Instagram down in the description because he put me back on SES. I had totally forgotten about this brand. Um, he put me back on them and he also has a set of SES wheels on his black double cab, which is a super clean truck, black double cab on um, some BR6s. So I want you guys to check out his Instagram too if you aren't already following him. Uh, previously known as 12 white tundra he also had his black double cab on some sprockets which looked i mean it was just it was a mean looking truck and um his is a little bit different than mine mine's a little bit different from his so you kind of get a little bit of difference between our instagram pages but definitely check him out really cool dude um he installed i think a three quarter inch uh Bora wheel spacer on his and um it poked his wheels out just a little bit more and it looks super clean so who knows maybe i'll maybe i'll throw a one inch spacer on the truck to get a little bit more stance um so with the hostiles the other thing that i noticed was i was like really really um cautious kind of like driving around curves i'm obviously not trying to like curb these wheels but i have a lot more like bubble due to the 1250 tire on the nine inch wide wheel give me one sec sorry guys my dog's off leash and i just saw him wagging his tail figured he was excited about something coming up the road but there's nothing um so i have a little bit more cushion with these also, um, I can turn a little bit better in reverse with these, but my hostiles, I actually curbed one the entire time that I had them. I curbed one on a Chick-fil-A drive through you know, the Lord's chicken, everybody's got to go for the Lord's chicken, but let's be honest, a lot of their drive throughs freaking suck. So I was really tight, took that, took that turn bad and curbed a wheel. Have not curbed any of these, not trying to, but, um, also with this wheel entire setup, you have the ability to air down, obviously. Meanwhile, the 20 by 12s, um, I didn't. However, I never really felt the need to air down with them because um, I would never really wheel the truck with it. And the stuff that I would wheel with it, I wheel with these and I can wheel with it like full pressure. Obviously, I'm sure that if I air down, ride quality is gonna be much better. But um, since I don't have onboard air, I don't air down at the moment. Onboard air is on the plan for this truck because I can use it for the truck my lawn care setup uh whether it be like mowers trailer all that good stuff it's always great to have on board air so um for those of you that are looking for a wheel and tire setup for your first gen personally me my recommendation i prefer and will always go for a high offset wheel stance to me looks so much better than a tucked in wheel, wheel or tire setup a flush wheel and tire setup looks good and the pro to it is you don't get all that stuff like slung up the side of your truck but i'll take the debris dirt water all that crap getting slung up the side of my truck for the sake of the look that's just me um i know some of you will disagree with that say it's stupid whatever you're entitled to your opinion just like i am to mine and you're entitled to a personal preference just like i'm entitled to one so personally me I think if I could, if I wanted to go back to more of a street setup, um, I would definitely be looking for like a set of old school 17 by 12 welds, especially like some Cheyennes or something, I think would look really, really clean on a Tundra, a first gen Tundra with some 33s. Um, you kind of get the stance, but still the smaller um, look for some more cushion, but you'd also probably lose a little bit um, like steering input because it, it, you'd have the leverage of the extra wide wheel again. So who knows? Um, but I would definitely be game to try that setup if I could find a set of welds that are like cheap enough that people don't want an arm and a leg for. Um, but personally, me, I would definitely go for a high offset 17 inch wheel. 18, you know, still passes, but it's just easier to kind of find tires for 17s and they're a little bit cheaper. Um, 20s, if you want to try out 20s, um, I would definitely say that it's okay for a work truck setup however obviously you do have more rolling mass so you know if you're towing definitely want to have trailer brakes like i like how i do um and just be cautious of where it is that you're going to be taking your truck they don't do great off-road you're obviously more likely to risk damaging them with a low profile tire which everybody knows there's a reason they're called mall crawler wheels uh but chances are you're not wheeling with that wheel and tire setup and that's fine um not everybody wheels do do you you know at the end of the day uh, me personally on the 17s i used to wheel them a lot now i'm not really doing it i don't really have the time to um this is like my downtime in work so i'll probably be doing it here soon but it's not going to be anything crazy towards like rock crawling or anything like that now which is what the majority of people do you know just we can warrior uh, jeep trails forest service roads that kind of stuff easy to do with a 20 by 12 just like a 30 just like a 17 by 9 
on 33s. So um, that's just my kind of input. Which do I prefer? Like I said, I now prefer this smaller wheel and larger tire setup versus my old one. Would I ever go back? Yeah, I'm open-minded to it. If I saw a really, really clean 20, um, I would definitely be open to going back to it. But for now, this is a look that I want to keep. Um, I do want to get an off-road bumper. Um, there's a couple of other things that I want to do. I was really looking at some KMCs, but they were beadlocks. And just for a daily driver, and especially something that I'm towing with, um, I don't think it's worth the risk. So if any of you guys know of some chrome or polished 17 by 9 um, high offset wheels, I, I don't want anything less than like a negative 38 millimeter offset. But if you know of any, comment down below. To the next part, like I had mentioned, um, I ran BFG KO2s. We have a we've had trucks with uh, dirt tracks. We've had trucks with um, Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws, and uh, Nitto, I've had Nitto Ridge Grapplers on this truck, and I've had Toyo MTs on this truck. Personally, me, which do I prefer? The KO2 was the best for my lifestyle because I spend so much time on the road versus actually being in the dirt. Um, I never had an issue pulling trailers through mud with the KO2s. Um, they would spin a little bit, but anything in four-wheel drive, they do great. Um, Duratrax, really loud. Not my cup of tea, uh, but great off-road where we've used them. But uh, road noise, the amount of road noise for as aggr an aggress as an aggressive of a tire as a Duratrax is, I don't think it's worth it. Um, AT3Ws, I haven't used them off-road, but I've used them on-road, and they are a fantastic tire for anybody looking for something a little bit more than a highway terrain. They look great, they perform great, they ride really quiet, and they handle great in rain too. Um, Toyo MTs, they can get a little loud. They don't suit my lifestyle because of the fact that I drive so much and I don't have time to constantly be getting tire rotation imbalances so i have some like slight uneven wear and that makes them louder but that's on me that's not the toyo mt that's on me and i get that um so for me this tire as you can see like i said i have a year with them now and you can see how much tread is still left on them um i have roughly like 16 no probably like probably like 17,000 miles on them and um what I've noticed is it's probably down to like 50% tread, if that. So I think I'll be lucky if I get 35,000 miles out of this set. And I paid like $1,500 for these tires. So mileage to cost ratio isn't good compared to the KO2, which I got 62,000 miles out of. And I think I paid like 1,600 for that set or like 1,700, something like that. Um, Nitto Ridge Grapplers, I hate. Uh, Toyo RTs I haven't had but from my experiences with friends I don't think um, hybrid tires is where it's at for me especially with those manufacturers I think their all terrains are a little bit too close to like the street end of the spectrum of all terrains so that kind of makes their RTs less aggressive uh, their hybrids like less aggressive so um, when you mix it with their mud terrains it just kind of makes them to not be aggressive and it has a lot to do with where you live. For me here in Georgia, um, like I said, where I actually need an aggressive tire, um, like in landfills, dumps when I'm pulling trailers, um, those areas generally it's red clay. If it gets wet at all, it becomes really slick, and that makes it to where those tires don't perform well for me. Um, my KO2s, I never had an issue with the trailer. My Nitto Ridge Grapplers, I almost sunk my truck at a landfill with an almost empty trailer. Um, had issues getting in and out of like creeks that my my ko2s that were way more bald would climb out of no problem uh mts walk through that kind of stuff you know um so for me personally what do i think my next tire is going to be it's i think it's still going to be a mud terrain because i really really like the performance and the look um when i need it the performance when i need it in like slick conditions i, I really rarely ever have to lock it into four wheel drive now <laughs> and um but it's not going to be like a Toyo MT or a Nitto Trail Grappler, nothing like that. It'll probably be something like a Yokohama or a cheaper mud tire because if I'm going to be getting like 35,000 miles out of them or 40,000 miles out of them, I'm not going to be paying $1,500 for a set of tires. Rather pay like 1200 or 1000 and, you know, if I got to swap them out, that's cool. And get a full-size spare and probably still be under the cost of what I paid for this set of Toyo MTs. 
So I would say that if you drive a lot on road, definitely keep it all terrain, as most people know. They perform great in wet conditions. Um, what's up, Levi? They perform great in wet conditions, have great on-road manners. They're quiet, um, usually pretty easy to balance and keep balanced. Uh, hybrid tires, not my cup of tea. Probably like a West Coast thing where it's more dry and their off-road conditions are more dry. Um, if they suit your lifestyle, hey, more power to you because you probably get great mileage out of them and they look great. But that's about it. They make way too much noise for the performance, in my opinion, here in my area. Um, mud, mud tires look great. They perform great in slick conditions. Um, in the rain, I've, I've personally never had issues in the rain. I've driven this truck at like 75 miles per hour in rain with mud tires. Never had an issue um, with like slipping or feeling like it was going to slip. Um, they all three slip off the line if I'm too hard on the throttle. So it is what it is it's it's a truck you know it's light on the ass end and it's a rear wheel drive obviously so there's that um but i would definitely say unless you're like really really constantly wheeling probably go with like a cheaper mud tire just my two cents but figured i would touch base with you guys and let you guys know in my honest opinion our setups so to take high offset 17s is my cup of tea um Depending on what you want, look for less offset or positive offset if you want tucked in or flush. Look for like a lower offset, like you know, like a uh, like a negative 12 or like negative 10ish area or like a zero, so you kind of get more flush. Um, positive, obviously, if you want tucked in. Negative, high negative, if you want it to stick out, like how I do. That's what I look for in every wheel that catches my attention. If they make it in a high off negative offset. Um, you like the aggressive look, constantly wheel, go much terrain. Um, maybe it's a weekend warrior, but you spend 90% of the time on the road. Go with an all-terrain, an aggressive all-terrain if you need it. Um, live on the West Coast or in wheel in dry conditions, get a hybrid tire. It probably will work for, will work out in your favor. Um, if you're just cruising on the streets, you know, you're a young dude, like truck shows, that kind of stuff, get a large wheel and tire set up and run whatever tire you want at that point um if you're mainly on the road and you have money for mud trains spend it you have money for all terrains and you want to get higher mileage out of them get all terrains you know just do whatever you want um check out the previous videos on my truck which is actually still doing really really well on if i regret doing 20 by 12s um check that out see what the truck looks like see if it's your cup of tea if it's not your cup of tea that's perfectly fine it's not going to be for everybody maybe you liked it better on the 20 by 12s let me know um it's a little bit of everything for everybody when i first got these wheel and wheels and tires i was really set on going back to a set of 20 by 12 i think i actually posted these for a sale after like a month or so of owning them but i ended up keeping them and i do not regret that decision so hopefully like i said this year i'll get a spare i'll get a spare wheel and then um probably by the end of the year i'm probably gonna have to get tires so we'll get all five brand new and take the truck down to mexico with this wheel and tire setup. And with that being said, so that I have from now until then to look into it, if you know of a spare wheel and tire carrier that's hitch mounted that I can lean forward to still open my tailgate, drop a comment down below, hit me up on my Instagram, Marcus underscore 1296, send me a link, something so I can check it out. Would be greatly appreciated. And with that, let's wrap this up. I appreciate all you guys watching. Um, if you've made it this far, I appreciate your support. Uh, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and with that, we'll catch you on the next one.